Marie Louveau was a free woman of color who was of African, Native American, and French descent. She was speculated to be born in 1801. However, some documents say she was born in 1794. Louveau grew up in her grandmother's house, to which will become the Laveau house. There is believed she learned to be a hairdresser, to which became her main source of income for her and her family. Louveau married a Creole man by the name Jacques Perry. Jacques reportedly came up missing without a trace. From that, Louveau began referring to herself as Widow Perry. Voodoo came into Laveau's life as she grew up in New Orleans where Roman Catholic practices mixed with voodoo. The voodoo rituals intrigued Laveau and it is believed that many of the voodoo practices she learned were passed down from her mother and her grandmother. Her life as being the voodoo queen most likely began in the 1840s. A newspaper article from 1869 proclaimed her as the reigning voodoo queen for a quarter of the century. It is an educated guess that thus the 1840s was the start. The free people of color were on the edge of poverty and enslavement in New Orleans at the time. Yet Louveau was known to have great influence in the city. It is thought that this came from her being a hairdresser and also trying to know all that she could about the people of the city. She would style the hair of the most prominent women of New Orleans and people tend to talk when they were at her salon. She would use this information to her advantage when hearing all the gossiping and the complaints. She held so much knowledge that people believed that she had powers of divination. Her reputation made it so that even the police were afraid to confront her. Louveau, while a wife and a mother, she extended her caretaking to her community. Louveau was said to have conducted voodoo rituals in her St. Anne cottage, as well as dancing in Congo Square, and leading voodoo ceremonies along the shores of Lake Pontchartrain. Louveau was described to have, quote, walked down the street as if she owned them and danced as if she was the master of the spirit world, end quote. She was known to have her snake, Lee Grand Zambé, around her as she danced. Lee Grand Zambé was the major serpent spirit of worship of the New Orleans voodooists. Laveau's snake being the major serpent spirit is a symbol of the power that she held in the voodoo community. Legend states that her power made people fear ever wronging her from the stories that would happen to anyone who had. While New Orleans had other voodoo queens, her influence made her reign above all others as queen of the voodoos. Louveau had a wide array of abilities from casting spells, performing exorcisms. Her practices provided a good amount of income from selling amulets called Grigris. These amulets originated in Africa. They were thought to bring love and protection from any evil. Laveau would also make sacrifices to spirits and acted as an oracle. Because of the quote, strange potions, her complex rhythms and rituals, and the sudden disappearance of her first husband, many people believed that she was conspiring with the devil, that voodoo was linked to the dark arts. However, that was far from the truth of what was being practiced. The core values of New Orleans voodoo is protection and healing. Louveau's home was a safe environment and was filled with imagery of saints. In fact, Louveau would attend Catholic mass almost daily. She had a strong desire to help her community. She made sure to provide the locals with aid whenever she could. Whenever a free woman of color was accused of crimes, Laveau would pay their bonds, granting them freedom until proven guilty. She comforted prisoners, offering them food, prayers, and guidance to redemption. Laveau would also sponsor the education of many orphans and came to the aid of many Native American women. Her kindness to others was so great that she was regarded as a living saint. As the yellow fever outbreak in New Orleans arose, none of the traditional medicine was helpful. However, the natural remedies provided by Afro-Creole nurses such as Laveau proved to be more helpful. The Civil War raised racial tensions and the new laws in New Orleans emerged, such as the banning of voodoo ceremonies. After the Emancipation Proclamation and the Civil War, white people began to view voodoo as being associated with evil. Some white people even used the dancing and voodoo ceremonies to mock them and said, quote, because their practices, Africans were ignorant, end quote. In 1881, Laveau passed away in her cottage where many came to seek refuge and spiritual guidance. A large, diverse group of people attended Laveau's funeral. Thousands took to the street to pay their respects to the women who had helped so many. Reporters at the time called her, quote, a saintly figure who nursed the sick. The stories, the legacy, and the legends of Marie Laveau is still well and alive in the voodoo community and in New Orleans. Every year, thousands of people come to visit her tomb to pay their respects and visit historical sites to hear her story. Many people hear voodoo and hear her name and don't understand how truly impactful she was and the truth behind what she practiced. 
She is engraved in the rich history of New Orleans, Marie Laveau, the Voodoo Queen.